<laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hope you're having a happy Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Shaka. I didn't know what to talk about today, so I'm just going to talk about Jesus. <laughs> Let's talk about the Word of God. The Word of God made flesh. Holly, aren't you happy that Jesus is alive in you? You don't got to wait until you leave the earth. You can leave the earth anytime in your spirit, man. Just sit in Christ in heavenly places. The true you is spirit. <laughs> Hair, man. Three hair. Trim. <laughs> you know the Bible says, uh, oh yeah, shaka. Well, yeah, these are my Bibles. They say what I can do. <laughs> I can't remember how that goes. This is my Bible, it's what I say I can do. <laughs> Supposed to hold it up and say something. I don't remember. Hallelujah, Shaka. You know why uh, my name on Facebook is like Chris Radical Man La Valley and YouTube is just Radical Man? I didn't give myself that name. That came out of a prophetic experience. <laughs> it was actually, well, I'll go all the way back to when I was like a newer believer and, uh, and we went to this youth retreat, this youth camp. Holy Spirit, Hallelujah, Shaka. Love the most amazing song of all. It's in the spirit. I went to this youth uh, camp thingy and with this uh, Filipino fellowship. I was a part of this group, and uh, this was way back. This is like man, over a decade ago. Uh, probably longer than that. Over a decade, yeah, shaka. <laughs> and. As I'm sitting at the, I'm sitting at the table with this girl, we're in like this cafeteria setting. We just arrived at the campgrounds. It was funny because just as we went through the campground doors, like boom, the heavens just opened up. You can feel angels, God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, the angel, like the, the heavens were just open. Whatever's in heaven, it was on earth as it was in heaven. So it was really easy to be normal. You know, it's not normal if you're like in a closed heaven and there's demons oppressing you. And You know, that came from the fall. We're fixing that though, we're fixing that. We're gonna cleanse the heavens. <laughs> cleanse the heavens by manifesting, you know, the heavenly nature of Christ Jesus through your spirit, your spirit and his spirit. When he appears in glory, then you'll also appear with him in glory. Where? Cleansing the heavens, in the heavens. Have a good rapture. <laughs> Have a rapture today, hallelujah. So I'm sitting at this cafeteria, and there's this girl in front of me, and there's people all around, hallelujah, <laughs> I'm gonna get blasted all morning, man, hallelujah. Okay, I'm gonna try to focus here on the testimony of Jesus. It's the spirit of prophecy. If it happened to me, it's, it can happen to you. So I'm sitting at this table in the cafeteria and all these people around me, it was like being at McDonald's now. With Shaka. And then all of a sudden, like all the voices, yeah, 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 they're all talking, they're all just, and the voices go far off into the distance. And it's just me and this girl here. And then the Lord speaks to me. And he says, tell her I love her. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa. Wow, is that like a prophetic word? Like, what is that? <laughs> I was a little bit slow. I was very slow. I'm still pretty slow, but God, you know, I think that's why it's in the Bible. It says like, uh, you will quicken you, quicken your mortal body or something like that, by the spirit in you. I need to be quickened a lot because I'm really slow. Shaka. So all the voices, they all come back. The voices all come back. And I'm sitting with this girl and I'm thinking, I can't tell her that God says he loves you because if I say that, she's gonna think that I like her and I'm just using this to get closer to her to win like brownie points with her and stuff like that. <laughs> you know how all the natural mind gets in the way of the spirit? The natural mind is that enmity against God. The natural man, the natural mind, I gotta read that so I figure out it's actually the natural man or the natural mind. It's in Romans 8. It fights God. It's like, if I say this, this will happen. And it's like a fear. Oh, God just said that he loves her. 
<laughs> so I'm like, I didn't say anything. I was scared. It was like uh, this fear came over me of not like the natural. So not the fear of man, but kind of like the fear of man, I guess. Yeah, fear of rejection, or I don't even know. I don't. It was some sort of demonic fear that came over me, and I obeyed it because I was still new. And then uh, later on that night, we went to this. Uh, they were all dancing around, like it was a conference thing or whatever, so they preached like three times a day or something like that. <laughs> and the, the preacher, uh, Lynn, I can't remember her name, it was some lady, she was awesome, man. She would wait on the Holy Ghost, like she'd be, everyone, shakala, we're all dancing in the spirit, the glory, bam, and everyone's just getting blasted, and she'll stop. Then everyone's like, you know, how come she's not saying anything? How come she's not, how come she's not preaching? How come she's not performing? How come she's not praying? <laughs> And she would, because she would only follow the Holy Ghost. And she didn't care what anyone else thought. She only cared what he thought. That's a good lesson in itself. When you're surrounded and you feel under pressure that you have to perform, just stop. Pull back and, God, what do you want to do? That's what she taught me. Well, taught all of us there. But God wanted her to line everyone up and uh, just pray over them. <laughs> so, okay, great, man, we're gonna get some, like, prophetic, you know, words and get anointed in the spirit and just, who knows what's gonna happen, you know? Get healed, saved, and delivered. Well, I was standing beside that girl who I refused to, like, I, I chickened out, I didn't say God says that he loves you. I mean, that's a real word from the Lord. When it's from the Lord saying that, tell her I love her, it's, it's really the Lord. <laughs> You know, it's, it's good to say Jesus loves you and you're walking down the street just to random strangers. Because it's the word of the Lord. He truly does love them. Yeah. But this time it was really like the word of the Lord, like rhema right there. It wasn't logos, it was rhema. And so I was standing beside this girl and uh, she looks at this, this, uh, this lady, Lynn, I can't remember her name. She looks me in the eyes and just burned a hole through me like whoa she's gonna prophesy <laughs> and then she looks over at the girl and she looks back at me again she said and then the Lord spoke through her and said you be the radical man that I have called you to be and then she touched my forehead and bam that was it I whited right out I was on the floor snot you know <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> like a big baby just curled up in the lap of Jesus, man. <laughs> I'm like, oh man, I got rebuked by God, but it felt so good, you know? Oh, and then, uh, and then she looks over at the girl and says, God says, I love you. And then, bam, that girl was right beside me. She was laying on the floor, you know, tears, snot. <laughs> The full manifestation of the river of life come out of the body. <laughs> Hallelujah, man. <laughs> yeah, so that's how I got my name Radical Man, because it was a rebuke. I'm like, okay, God, I gotta be radical for Jesus. <laughs> no, when you're living the world, you're radical for Mr. D. Oh, I feel some glory. <laughs> Hallelujah, you need to be radical. Holy Ghost. Be radical for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah, man. I don't care what people think. Just grab your Bibles and do what they say you can do. Hallelujah. If you can see it in the Spirit, you can manifest it in the earth. Through your gates. Glory. Shaka. Shaka. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now we can be radical for you. We can be on fire fire for God and never let that fire go out. Did you, did you know that in the Old Testament that the fire uh, is never too supposed to go out? <laughs> you guys feel that man? I can. I don't man. Just let's, let's stop. <laughs> Let's just slow down a little bit here. <laughs> Hallelujah, Shaka. The Old Testament, the fire was never to go up. And in Samuel, uh, the priest, uh, man, what is his name, man? Shaka. It says that the lamp was going dimmer, and the voice of the Lord was like rare in those days, you know? So God chose Samuel to be a little boy 
to be his prophet because Samuel would lay down close to uh, uh, the altar or something like that. Hallelujah. He would go to sleep. He would rest there. He was a he was a soaker man. Samuel, where is that in the Bible? Must be in the book of Samuel. Shaka. Samuel. Let's check out Samuel chapter three. I got my Bible here. And this, oh yeah, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So, because Jesus spoke to me in that way and rebuked me in that way, it's like God is saying to you, you know, just be radical. Just go all out. Go all out. Don't let any man stop you in pursuing the manifest presence of God. Don't let any man stop you from, like, trying to shut you down, trying to cap you off with religious spirit. Just go and burn. Let the fire of God burn through your heart and set everyone else ablaze. And the Holy Spirit oil will come and just throw oil on that fire. Boom. All men are like trees. You have like a forest fire in the glory, man. All the trees will just be anointed with fresh oil and the fire of God coming out of your heart and your mouth will just set them all ablaze. So that you'll be the light of the world, man. A forest fire set on blaze by the fire of God. Passion for God. It's like nothing can stop. The fire's not supposed to go out. Hallelujah. Let's read what the Bible says about them. I don't know why I talk like that. It's, it's funny. I enjoy myself. You know, I like making these videos. There's no pressure to like try to be like like uh, anybody else. The most anointed person you could ever be is yourself in the glory. <laughs> you can try to be other people for a season. You know, you take on their mannerisms. You take on. You even say, thus saith the Lord. And, you know, you shake your eyebrows and you prophesy or whatever. That's cool for a season. But the best you, the most anointed <laughs> you could ever be is you in the glory. It's Christ coming through you, the hope of glory. <laughs> you know, God doesn't have like cookie cutter Christians or cookie cutter uh, sons and daughters, cookie cutter like manifestations of himself. It's, we're like snowflakes. Each one is different and unique, and yet have our own manifestation the way we manifest God. <laughs> Whatever. Hallelujah. And the child Samuel, Samuel, the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, okay, well, I was going to go back to that, the way they experienced. It wasn't like audible words. It was just like a strong impression when God said to me, tell her I love her. It was a thus saith God unto me, speaketh unto the... No, it was like, it was like, I love her. Tell her I love her. And you know what would have happened? The love of God would have came right out of my mouth, out of my heart. Jesus would have stepped out of me and like just wrapped his love around her and threw her. Because, this, you know, the words have spirit in them. The spirit is the spirit of God. It's God. God would have came through the words and touched her with that realm of love himself. But a uh, uh, lesson learned. You know, we live, we learn, we grow, we glow. <laughs> so let's read this. Shut up. <laughs> Holy Spirit. <laughs> Just keep filling us, Lord. This video is only relevant to the amount of the spirit. God, that comes through it. <laughs> Hallelujah, man. I believe in that, Shaka. And it came to pass at the time when Eli was laid down in his place. Notice, in his place. And his eyes began to wax dim. Getting blind because he was in his place. <laughs> that he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. It was written that that lamp was never to go out. Because if that lamp fire goes out in your heart, you, you lose sight of Jesus, you lose sight of the Holy Ghost, you lose sight of the Father, and Father of glory. 
and you start laying down in your own place, you start doing your own thing, you start doing what you think should be done in the name of God, but it turns into religion, knowledge of good and evil. It's death. Even the good in the knowledge of good and evil, knowledge of good and evil was death. Even the good, which is, to me, knowledge of good and evil. It's knowledge about good, it's knowledge about evil, it's knowledge about. There's no life in it, because life is experience. Try to have a marriage with just knowledge about your wife or your husband and without any experience. That'll be the worst marriage. <laughs> like, you know, just, just read a book about God, but you never actually experience God. That's called the knowledge of good and evil. It's knowledge about good, it's knowledge about evil, but there's no life experience or transformation in your soul, spirit, and body life. You want the tree of life, life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. You want the real Jesus. He's the, you know, he's the living God. You want the living God. If he's living, I want that life living through me. Hallelujah, Shaka. Amen. Hallelujah. I keep getting like waves of like this peace. God, I just release your peace in my spirit into this place, God. Fill them. Fill them, fill them, fill them, fill them, fill them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The most important thing that you could ever do is not what you do for God, what God does through you. Because that's eternal fruit. That's good works. <laughs> what was that? No one is good but God. I think Jesus said that, right? You want good works? Let God do the works. <laughs> you just you just step in there with your body and you open your mouth and let him flow out. You step in there with your body, you lay hands on the sick and they recover. You speak the word, his word in your mouth and your spirit. And boom, you know, when you worship God, you worship Him in the spirit and in truth. You don't, you don't, you don't try to like bring a crowd into, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I was, man, Chuck, I'm going all over the place. That's okay, whatever. Some of you probably need to hear this. If you're a worship leader, man, I was, just, I was like in this church leading worship and then uh, it was great. The glory of God would come and just smack people, just boom set them on fire, they'd be crying, laughing, falling on the ground, just mega blessed by God. And then I started hanging, I, I listened to this one worship leader, I mean she, she amazing worship leader, really good at the piano, uh, loved God, except for I got this one uh, tip, well, really bad advice that this person gave me, and, and uh, said, no you cannot cry when you're when you're leading worship you're there to bring the people uh, into worship you're there to lead it's not time to kind of whatever I thought I thought I was a worship leader I lead by example <laughs> and we kind of got into this back and forth thing and you know our little prideful opinions got in the way and shut it down so I thought well maybe this person's right I'm gonna like I'm not gonna focus on God I'm gonna focus on the people getting them into the presence of God however that works I lost the anointing for like a month or, or so. I could not feel God in worship at all. Like, I was like, okay, everybody, let's raise our hands. Let's sing to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, everyone, put your hands down now. Let's go home because this is boring. <laughs> There's no anointing. And then, uh, so I just, I threw that out the window. That, to me, that was the knowledge of good and evil. It was knowledge about life, but it never brought me into the experience of life. And I was already experiencing the tree of life. When we go into worship, when, because I open up my gates, my heart, my spirit to God, God would come flying through me and blast everyone who was, who was capped off. And because I had an open heaven in my heart, they got an open heaven in their heart. It was like Samuel in the Old Testament. Samuel was prophesying. And then King Saul came off and ripped off his clothes and he started prophesying too. What happened? It's like Saul, King Saul, you know, the one who was, you know, he had a bad end, but he stepped into Samuel's open heaven and it, it broke something off of him that he could step into an open heaven. But the thing is, continuing to walk in that open heaven takes hunger, desire, and, you know, diligence. 
diligently pursuing the presence of God to maintain that open heaven. You maintain the relationship for the open heaven. You don't maintain the knowledge of good and evil. You maintain the tree of life. Yeah? Experience. All right, let's get deep into the word here. Shaka. <clears throat> Holy, Holy Spirit, welcome you. More. <laughs> Ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. That the Lord, that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here am I. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here am I for you. I'm just gonna like this is a King James, so I'm just gonna like take the call list and say called, and you know, you know what I mean. You called me, and and he said, I called not. <laughs> Lie down again, and he went to lay down. And the Lord called yet again, Samuel. And Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. And, and he answered, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the Lord of the Lord revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. Hallelujah, there's something about those threes. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for you, for you called me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. See, when the lamp of the Lord goes out, your discernment is really slow. You might not even discern that like God is actually talking to other people around you and <laughs> it took him three times, but at least he got it. The third time, you know, the third day, the Lord's going to raise us up. Hallelujah. A day with the Lord is as a thousand years, right? Hallelujah. He's going to raise up his body third day. It's been 2,000 years. We're stepping into the third day where Jesus is raising up his body, the body of Christ. Only those in Christ, not, not, the, not the natural body that you know, lives in buildings and whatever that doesn't even know God. They just sit on a pew. Some of them know God. But I'm talking about the body of Christ. Christ is the anointing. Christ is spiritual. The body of spiritual Christ. He's raising up the body of Christ on the third day. Because we're it's been 2,000 years since he died and rose. So he's running up, it's been a day with the Lord since a thousand years. So we're stepping into the third day where he's raising up the entire body of Christ. Although we're already there, we're already seated with Christ in heavenly places, we're gonna be well aware of where we sit. We're gonna be well aware of our rank and our authority and where the authority comes from. And we're gonna release that authority to cleanse the heavens because that's our job. We wrestle with principalities and powers in the heavenly places. Why are we wrestling them? To wipe them out, to shake them down, to cast them down. So that because we're taking the heavens back, the second heaven or whatever, the heavenly realm belongs to the sons of God. Hallelujah. We're seated there in Christ. Christ is the anointing. And it's about time we have a rapture. <laughs> <laughs> That's my rapture theory. I get raptured with the bliss and the, the wine, the love, the peace of God passes all theology and understanding. I don't care about all the other theologies about the rapture. If there's no glory on it, all I see is the fruit of debating. Like the little pre-trib, post-trib, you know, just trip and trip, you know, like just get into the rapture of God. Like, you know, <laughs> taste of the powers of the age to come today, you know? <laughs> Get your raptured in the love of God and just like cleanse the heavens just by you existing on sitting in Christ. Hallelujah, man. Glory, shaka, rakata And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he rose and went to Eli and he said, Here I am, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. There's his calling. What's your calling? Is your calling to be a prophet? Or is your calling to the Lord? <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't want an office. I just want God. God's my office. I'm going to hide inside my office and shut the door. And if he wants to open the door and oh, let some rivers flow out, so be it. Jesus can be the teacher. You know, Holy Spirit can be the pastor. You know, the Father can be the evangelist. <laughs> you know, <laughs> let him be the prophet speaking, speaking through our mouth, the body of Christ. Or let him be the apostle building up and tearing down, you know. 
sending us <laughs> all across the all across the blue spinning planet, like hundreds of thousand miles an hour through outer space. Oh, man. All right, let's let's read the Bible. Shotgun. Therefore, Eli said unto the Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be if he call thee that thou say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood and said, as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant hears. Speak for your servants here. We're going to be like little children listening to the voice of God. If the voice of the Lord is new to us, God, we just speak, Lord. We don't have to run to man to try to hear God. We just hear God through man and through, but heart to heart, spirit to spirit, deep calling unto the deep. We can hear you through preachers. We can hear you through the written word. We can hear you through looking at how the sun rises and dies and rises and dies and rises. And it's, it's a prophetic shadow how the Son of God has risen, but He died, but He rose again. And it's oh, <laughs> glory to God, Lord. Hallelujah, Shaka. Thank you that everything points to Jesus. Everything points to Jesus. Thank you for the word of the Lord being precious to us, God. It's precious, Lord. Let your words come. Let the word of the Lord come to us with fire to relight that lamp, God. The lamp that's burning in our heart. The lamp of our first love gate. Hallelujah, man. Hallelujah, Shaka. Hallelujah, Shaka. And the Lord said to Samuel, oh yeah, Shaka. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel at the which both ears of everyone that heareth shall tingle. <laughs> tingle. Wow, some tingling ears. Oh, I don't have an interpretation on that one. I just feel some sauce, so I just kind of stop. God's sauce. God's anointing. It's like sauce. I want to get sauce, Lord. I want to get so sauced. Like a flying saucer. Just going through space. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, thank you, Lord, for the sauce. Shut up. And that day I'll perform against Eli all the things which I have spoken concerning his house. I don't know why I said house so loud. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're the house of the Lord, you know. The latter, <laughs> the latter house is greater than the former. You know why? Because the new one has a ladder. The latter house <laughs> has a ladder. The Son of Man ascends and descends upon it. Hallelujah. <laughs> He's the ladder house. Angels, you know, we're ascending and descending on the old one. <laughs> Hallelujah, man. I might be a little bit too happy. <laughs> the ladder house is uh, is the temple of the Holy Ghost where Jesus brings heaven down to earth through your body, which is his body, the body of Christ, and manifests glory. The glory of the latter house is greater than the former house. Hallelujah. Because it's not just like oh, one person, it's corporate. The entire body of Christ. It's like the bride coming down from heaven with the glory of God. Why is she coming down from heaven? To manifest the glory. Hallelujah. So that the whole earth will know. The whole earth will taste and they will see that God is good and we'll have to make a decision. Hallelujah. See, man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Like, wow, you got... You got a frog hat on. I can't listen to you. 
I only listen to people wearing a suit and a tie. <laughs> it's true. I've seen it. Anointed people, man. I love these people. But he won't let anyone preach in his church unless they wear a suit and a tie. And it's not even his church. It's God's church, right? But he's thinking about, you know, the building or whatever. That's cool. That's cool. I mean, that's just his... Uh, he wants everyone to look presentable, but... You know, I guess John the Baptist isn't worthy to preach in the church. That's why John the Baptist had to go out in the wilderness, because it's, you know... They didn't, they didn't know who wants to go out to lunch with that guy. You know, let's go for grasshoppers and honey. <laughs> Everyone's going to Red Lobster and he's going to like, you know, great grasshoppers and honey in the wilderness. Like, what are you guys are missing it? There's glory over here. <laughs> honey from the rock. It's revelation, you know? Hallelujah. Well, you guys know about that? The honey from the rock? Like, uh, Jonathan took, uh, remember Saul? He, he was like, uh... He made this this decree saying, anyone who tastes food will be put to death or something like that. And Jonathan, his son, he didn't hear this. So he, but he was walking through, they were battling, had a big battle, whatever. They're all weary, tired. And he took the end of his stick and he dipped it in honey. And, he, and when he took that honey from the rock, is the Bible says that his eyes were enlightened. Come on, you want the light of Christ coming through your eyes. <laughs> God said, I think it was Psalm 80, if you would have opened your mouth, I would have given you uh, honey from the rock, I think. I don't know. I might, oh, jeez. Whatever. God, play the blood of Jesus on me. Shaka. Yeah, honey from the rock. You want honey from the rock? It's revelation. I mean, the rock is revelation. Honey is the sweetness of God. It's the goodness of God coming in the form of revelation. I remember sitting in for hours in this honey glory liquid cloud. For two hours, I could step in, I'm in the glory. Whoa, shaka. And then I could step out. I'm like, wow, it's all natural here. Everyone's praying because we're in a prayer meeting. So I step back into the honey. I'm like, whoa, shaka. I'm just visions, angels. I mean, I just, I watched. <laughs> My favorite vision out of that time was I saw Jesus standing in heaven. He's, he was like this. His hands were down like this. And a dove flew out of his hand, and this river of water was pouring out of his hand. And I, I stopped the pastor from praying. I'm like, Whoa, I just saw Jesus, and he's standing in heaven. And a dove just flew out of his hand, and there's rivers of living water coming out. And then the interpretation came instantly. We're, the body of Christ is the hands of God, right? The hands. <laughs> God's going to pour out His Spirit through His body onto the earth. God's going to pour out His Spirit upon all flesh through you. The body of Christ. Holy Ghost. Wow. And then, uh, like, that's really good, Chris. And they went back to, they went back to praying, and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going back in the honey glory clap. And I saw the, I saw these angels, and I don't know how to explain it, and holiness unto the Lord. I was, <laughs> Just visions, revelations, just the heavens were just wide open because that was normal for a spirit person, a spirit being living in Christ in heavenly places. I mean, it's a heavenly place, right? It felt like heaven. Wow. And I could step in and out at will until after two hours and I just couldn't step back in unless I talked about it to my friends. And when I talked about it, I remember I was driving in my car. I said, yo, <laughs> my friend RC, I said, man, I got caught up in a honey glory liquid cloud in a prayer meeting he's like really yeah and i started talking about the honey glory cloud and then all of a sudden this guy's real serious and stuck <laughs> he starts laughing like this hyena i'm like what man i can feel the honey i can taste the honey i'm like whoa that's the testimony of jesus is the spirit of prophecy like i spoke the testimony of jesus and it's coming to you I'm prophesying what happened to me and it's manifesting on you. That's that's the it's bearing witness of what I what I experienced was the truth. Hallelujah. So you can go sit in the honey glory liquid cloud and enjoy some revelation from the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It all came out of 333. Before I even went to the prayer meeting, I looked up at a, at a mirror building and had big 333 upon it. It's a mirror. You know, a mirror is the 
is the laver. You can see a reflection on it. The washing of the water, the word. Uh, the word is a mirror. It reflects. So you can see Jesus in yourself. <laughs> How much you need to get cleansed from all the unrighteousness, the thoughts, and the imagination of the exalting self against the knowledge of God. You get to cast them down by meditating on the word of God and getting revelation. So I saw this 333 on the building. And then... I was like, I know what that, that's Jeremiah 33 verse 3. And then Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, Call unto me and I will show you things that you do not know. Very simple. Call unto me and I will show you things that you do not know. So, I was like, wow, I'm going to go to the prayer meeting and I'm going to call upon God and He's going to show me some things that I don't know. And then He did. He started showing me some things that I don't know. That Wow, now I know. <laughs> he's going to pour out His Spirit on all flesh through His body. But at first, He's raising us all up in the heavenly realms in Christ so that we're aware and so we know how to release the glory so that the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory as the waters cover the seas. The waters of living water covering the seas of humanity. You want the living waters, the rivers of life, the river of life flowing through your gates, watering the seas of humanity from above. Hallelujah. That's what God's doing. That's what He's in. <laughs> Find out where you're resting. Rest in the glory and re release the glory. Hallelujah. Okay, let's get back to the Bible. In that day I will perform against Eli and all the things which I have spoken concerning his house when I did begin. I will also make an end. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he, uh, he knoweth. Oh, wow, well, I lost track here. Oh, yeah, because, uh, because his sons made themselves vile and he restrained them not. Yeah, so. He should have rebuked his sons. If you're going to rebuke someone, uh, I think a good thing for you to do is, like, he, re he didn't rebuke his sons because he was in a relationship with his sons. Like, I don't, like... Usually people try to rebuke me out of pride for things they don't understand. Like I probably get I get rebuked for my hats all the time. It's like people <laughs> rebuke me for my hats. Like uh, I had this other what, the, the monster hat or whatever. I bought that because my hair sucks. I got these curls in my hair, and I wanted it to be flat. And I just like the way it looked. I don't know about all the. Uh, they were saying it's like of the devil and it's the 666 and I'm going to hell. Well, not I'm going to hell, but I guess the hat's going to hell. I can't take it to heaven. So <laughs> I just like, wow, are you serious, dude? I got caught up to heaven wearing that hat. I guess God didn't really mind my outward appearance, but he, was, he really did mind my heart. And uh, so, yeah, it's not the outward appearance. Uh, it is actually really all to do about the inward cup. You know, what's inside your cup? Is it streams of pure living water? Or is it defiled dirty waters? You know, <laughs> the outside of the cup may look clean, but the inside is full of poison and venomous waters. You're going to want Holy Ghost to pour into you so you can flush all those dirty waters out, and then the inside will be clean. Even if the outside looks dirty, the inside's clean. That's all that matters. That's why Jesus washed the feet. It's walk. He wants your walk to be pure. Walking is walking with God. It's like you're walking with God. You know, all the poop of the world will get on you. That's okay. He's the one who will take it off. <laughs> you go to Jesus. You get your feet washed. You get your walk washed. It's all about Him getting drawing near, drawing nearer to God. You know, I could try to wash my own feet in the natural and they'll smell better, but that's cool, yo. But in the spirit realm, I need Jesus to wash my feet. Isn't that humbling? That man, the God of glory, would get so low that he would wash the feet of his own creatures who are walking, like, you know, they get dirty and filthy. But he still washes our feet because he loves us and he wants us to come up higher and be with him in the glory. Hallelujah. That just makes me love him more and more. Yeah. Oh, glory, we love you, Jesus. Thank you for washing our feet, God. I'll finish reading this in a bit. Lord, I just have a Jesus moment. Oh, Thank you for washing our feet, God. Shut up. <laughs> I have this friend. He's still my friend. Man, that, he's, he's a mystery to me, man. My friend Shane.
this dude is so freaking, like he's so anointed. I remember going to the church, like we used to go to this church called Lighthouse. And he was 15 years old, like he's like twice that age now. And then I walk into this church, I'm crying, the presence of God. The pastor just starts prophesying, you! I don't know you, but you've come in here and you, you know, blah, blah, blah. God's going to prosper your way. And it just, the words were just spirit hitting my spirit, just blasting me. I couldn't even read the, they have hymnals. They had a hymnal book and I couldn't even look, I couldn't see the words because I was so full of tears. And uh, I could not read the words on the hymnal, which is cool. Maybe that's why I was so deep in the spirit that day because <laughs> my natural mind was off. I was just like, just blown away, flying in the heavens with God. She prophesied over me. Then all of a sudden, this lady too, like in the front row, off to my left, she like just this old lady, just, just get, just letting it rip. And like, whoa, there was so much glory coming off of her. It was like an angel was standing there. And I was just getting so blasted by this. And I'm like, man, more tears. Like, wow, there is so much glory here. I ended up uh, leading worship in this in this church for like about 10 years or something. Yeah, oh, shaka, a lot of glory there. And then uh, I look over to this young kid. After she's finished, there was a little, little bit of silence. And then, uh, then this other kid, he's like 15 years old. Oh, is he doing this opera stuff? Like, wow, there's glory coming off of it. Okay. I hate opera, like, but this this was this was anointed. So as long as there's an anointing and glory on it, I love opera. But I, I just can't that shaking, wiggly voice thing. I don't know. I need the anointing, just to. <laughs> I need the anointing for opera. But this guy, I'm like, man, can he sing? I could not believe it. I have to be his friend. So uh, I started going back to this church, and then I brought my guitar in. I brought my guitar in, and then uh, I didn't bring it in the church. I left it in my car because I was going to like, I think I came from a street church or something like that, where I used to play guitar and all the demon possessed people would just get blasted and they want to stay around longer in the glory. <laughs> a lot of glory in the street church when you just boom shaka. Well, there's lots of darkness, there's lots of glory to release. So anyways, I brought my guitar in my car, and then uh, <laughs> oh man. After the service, like this was uh, about a year later or so, uh, they, they came up to me and like, he's the one. He's the one. The one what? And like, he's the one. And like, like you play guitar. I'm like, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I play guitar, but uh, like, do you, are you a worship leader? And like, I'm like, uh, no, I'm a worshiper. I don't leave nothing, man. I worship God. If other people want to come, that's up to them. I don't force nothing. <laughs> I had my diaper striped on real tight. I was ready for the, you know, kill the kills the devils. I'm not no worship leader. I'm just like I'm, a, I'm like that little Bam Bam guy from uh, from uh, the Flintstones. You know, I just got my stick and I bam bam and just like smash the devils around. <laughs> I don't know much what I'm doing, but I love God. <laughs> so uh, and there's like. Uh, they, they, got, they told me to go get my guitar out of the car or whatever. And they, they're all prophetic in this church. It was really cool. And I remember praying earlier. I said, God, I want, I want people who know you. Surround me with those people because I want to grow. And he answered that prayer by bringing me to this place. And uh, so I grabbed my guitar. And, and they're like, uh, yeah, let's sing a song. I'm like, no, sorry, man. I don't perform. <laughs> I was still rough on the edges. Like, yeah, yeah, no, let's worship God together, bro. And then, uh, I'm like, okay. So I said, Lord, I lift your name on high. You know, singing that song, traditional church hymn. <laughs> and then uh, the Shane guy's, whoa, I feel the anointing, man. And like, he's the one, he's the one. He's the one what? Someone's gonna, they, they said, someone's gonna be, there's, there's a guy coming who's going to write songs. I'm going to give him songs to release into the congregation or something. And then, yeah, God prepared me for this because I went to the States and this guy prophesied over me. He says, like, uh, I'm giving you, like, anointing similar to David. You're going to write songs, blah, blah, blah. It's going to break people free from oppression and stuff like that. 
And so it was coming to pass, all this prophetic stuff. This is all about the word of the Lord, right? Remember Samuel hearing the voice of God and that God's calling him, God calls him to himself, right? The office of the prophet just comes out of going to God. <laughs> and then, uh, and uh, how I heard God and, you know, it's, it was like all the voices just kind of went into the background. And then uh, you just, you, that's, how, that's kind of what it's like when you're, when you're, you're when you want to really tune into God. It's like all the world just kind of fades away. And it's just you and the Lord together. And then uh, kind of the world just comes back. And then you just release what the Lord gave you when you were in the secret place. Hallelujah, Shaka. Wow, I'm really enjoying this video. I hope you guys are. I feel a lot of peace. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you for the word of the Lord. Thank you for the honey glory liquid clouds in Jesus' name, electricity from heaven. <laughs> glory, shaka. Fill us up, whoa, there we go. Fill us up more, Lord. Oh, let's take a drink break. I just take my sippy cup and I just dip it in the river of life, Lord. Oh, life, 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 life more abundantly. Shut up. Jesus himself in your spirit. You have no need that any man teach you. The same spirit that teaches every man <laughs> is the Holy Ghost. You know, the same spirit. I'm trying to quote a scripture, right? I can't even remember it. So you better depend on the Holy Ghost if you want an accurate translation. Hallelujah. <laughs> wow, what's going on in my face here? Okay. Wow, thank you, Lord. Peace, peace, peace. Peace. Peace of God passes all your natural understanding. Glory to God. Shaka. Therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice or offering forever. Heavy word. And Samuel lay until morning and open the doors of the Lord's house oh wait and open the doors of the house of the Lord and Samuel feared to show Eli the vision did you see that did you see what just happened there and Samuel lay there until the morning he's he was a soaker man he laid in the manifest presence of God he laid he stayed where God spoke to him it's like, it's like when God speaks to you and that anointing is there, you stay there as long as you can until it lifts or whatever, until it's time to move on and follow the glory cloud. It's like what Moses did. They would go in the wilderness and when the cloud rested, they would stay there and they would camp out. But when the cloud moved, they would, they would pack up and follow the glory cloud. It's like you're following the glory. You're being led by the Spirit. You're being led by the glory, which is the person of God. You're being led by the Spirit of God to what the Spirit of God wants to do. And to position you where the Spirit of God wants you to be. You're not being led by uh, anything else but, but God. It's being led by the Spirit. <clears throat> and he laid there and opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Open your gates. Fling wide, you heavenly gates, and the King of glory shall come in. He's going to come into you, and He's going to come into the world, to the earth. He's going to flood the earth with the glory of God. Flood the earth with the manifest glory, shaka, the, the stuff we love, you know, the presence, the anointing to break off yokes off of people. Open the doors of the Lord. Who's the house of the Lord? He opened the doors to the house of the Lord. His heart was open because of the word of the Lord spoke to him. His mouth was open because of the word of the Lord came to him to speak. 